What is up, friend? Welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is Joshua S. with Seller Door Sound. Today we're going to be talking all about stereo delays. So for the last two videos, I've been talking about kind of a vocal effects chain that I use as kind of default in the majority of my mixes. Of course, I explore beyond that, but just as a starting point, this is normally what I have set up in my templates. Um, that's ready to go whenever I pull up a new mix. So if you haven't watched those videos, definitely click the little pop-up that just popped up and go watch those, and then come back to this one, and we're gonna finish this one out. But as always, before I get into that, if you're just learning and just starting out and mixing and trying to figure out how to mix your own vocal, make it sound awesome, make it fit with your song, I created a Ultimate Vocal Presets Bundle that has over 30 presets for EQ, compression, and saturation. And unlike most vocal preset bundles that you just download and throw on vocals. This one comes with a free training video that walks you through how to slightly change these presets so that they will work for your vocal, um, including EQ and compressors. And the coolest part is they work in both GarageBand and in Logic. And the second thing is if you're working in GarageBand and you found me through those videos, and you want to try out Logic Pro, they have a 90-day free trial that I'll also throw in the description that is pretty sweet, and it's just cool to be able to completely try out the program for 90 full days. And you don't even have to put a credit card or anything like that. And I'm not affiliated with them at all, but I just want you guys to have fun. And mixing in Logic is fun. You can do a lot more advanced things and definitely up your, your mix quality. So, so go get that. All right, so let's jump in this. So... In the last two videos, we added some vocal reverb, we did some vocal slap delay, which is really fun, and then we also automated the slap de delay just to go into the, the choruses there. And today we're going to do some stereo delay. So let's uh, pull up our little mix view here, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to our next uh, bus location to go to bus 3. Bus 3. We're going to name this Vox... Dell. I always label my normal delays box Dell. Sometimes I'll put if it's an eighth note, a quarter note, or whatever. And then we are going to go to delays, stereo delay, mono, stereo. We're going to want a stereo delay this time. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to kind of zero out these delay times. You can see one's 250 milliseconds, one's 500 milliseconds. So I'm going to option click this right delay, and it's going to put them in time together and we're going to turn off this tempo sync here which is this guy and then we're going to stereo link these so that whenever i move them it's going to be the same so if you have a song that you recorded inside of logic and recorded it to a click track it's a lot easier because you can just have this tempo sync on and then select what what you want you can actually go here and do eighth notes you can go to 16th notes you can kind of play around and it gives you more of an exact reading um so you don't have to do quite as much work but for this song it was not recorded in logic or if you have somebody just send you mix files um, or you just didn't use a, a tempo a click tempo that happens a lot in live recordings then um then you got to turn this tempo sync off okay so i'm going to show you how i figure out kind of a general delay time uh and I do it on my phone. So we're going to go to the phone here, and I use this app called N Metronome. It is completely free, and it works really, really well. Uh, you can set different BPMs and all that stuff, but I like to just push play on the song, and then they have a tap tempo, which you can see illuminating right there, where you can sort of just tap along with the delay that you want. So if you want 16th, 16th notes, you kind of just tap with the beat of the song, and then you'd find your BPM there. Um, and it's, I don't know, it works out pretty nice. All right, so I'm gonna push play and let's try it. I fight the fight to take revenge Although we die, we die again To win the room of Moby Dick Pull down All right, so we're about at 140. I kind of experimented with a couple different times. I did some 16th notes, and I was like, well, that's not really feeling right. You can kind of get a, a feeling of how you're going to lay sound by by tapping your finger. It helps It helps uh, avoid some of the guesswork because a lot of times you'll start tapping your finger, and you're imagining those delays with your tap, and you're like, ooh, that might be too much. Um, sometimes I like to do a lot of like triplet-type things because it's fun, but we're already getting a, a pretty big triplet-type sound in this song. And I don't really want that. So 
Now what we're going to do is, since this is at 139 BPM, we're just going to call it 140. We're going to go to good old Google here, and we're going to go uh, BPM to millisecond calculator. We're going to click this guy right here, and it's going to... All right. So we're going to type in 140. All right. So 140 is going to give us some quarter note, all these different things. So we're actually going to try the quarter note here. So we're going to do 429 milliseconds. So we're just going to type this in, 429 milliseconds. It's not going to let us do 429. I guess 40, 430 is where we're at. And I'm going to just mute our Vox verb and Vox slap, and let's just see if this starts to sound good. I'm going to turn up this knob here. I fight the fight to take revenge. Although we die, we die again. To All right, so this is just a little bit late, so I'm going to pull it back just a little bit. Let's just see. I fight the fight to take revenge. Although we die, we die again. To win the rule of Moby Dick. This is actually going to work kind of cool, so. Let's go with that. Let's just stick it 420. Now, I'm going to turn this up a little bit more. The cool part about this is right now we just have the left delay and right delay just coming straight down the center, right? So what I'm actually going to do, and again, definitely recommend headphones when you watch any of these videos, but you're not going to be able to hear it if you're watching it just on a phone or just computer speakers. We're going to turn the stereo link off. And I'm going to remember this 420 milliseconds, and I'm going to go plus 10 in either direction. Plus 10 here and minus 10 here. So we're going to go to 430 here, and we're going to go 410 here. And watch how this changes the sound here. I fight the fight to take revenge, although we die, we die. So this creates a movement where it's almost like kind of spinning around the the left and the right. Just to kind of go back and forth here, we're going to we're going to go ahead and do our 420 again. 420. And listen to this. I fight the fight to take revenge. Oh. Right? And then we're going to go 430 and 410. I fight the fight and you can do this anyway. You can have the right hit first or the left hit first. I think we're actually going to do the right for this one. So let's do 410 and let's do 430. Oh, 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 we missed it. <laughs> the fight to take we die, we die. And it's really cool. It's a really awesome kind of moving stereo thing. So the next thing we want to do that we've done with both of, of these effects is we want to do that same thing where we bring up an EQ. So we're going to go to our channel EQ. And we're going to cut out some of this low end here. So we're going to go about to like 200-ish. And then we're going to cut out some of this high end. So we're going to go to about 5K somewhere in there. And let's hear it. I fight the fight to take revenge Although we die, we die again to win the So this makes it a little more spacey. It's not so... All these high frequencies and the S's aren't poking out at us. We're not getting a, a rumbly low end out of it at all. We're really just setting the image back behind the vocal. And it starts to, to be pretty effective. So now let's mix this in with the Vox Verb and Vox Slap because on its own it sounds like kind of fine but it doesn't really fit so we need to blend it in with these guys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push play, kind of listen to where my Vox Verb and Vox Slap are sitting kind of in relation to each other. And then I'm going to bring up this bus 3 just past where I, almost where it's too much and then slowly dial it back to where I think it's starting to blend well with these guys.
So that's actually pretty sweet. That that sounds really good. It's blending really well with the slap and the verb, and it's adding a stereo dimension to this vocal, this kind of oscillating stereo dimension. And one other quick trick that you can do that I do a lot is sometimes I like to send my delay into my vocal verb. So I'll take a bus out of my Vox delay and go to my verb, because sometimes it's a little bit too dry, um, and it, it just adds a little bit more to the space. It makes it more realistic versus just a straight up dry uh, delay sound. So let's, uh, we're gonna mute this slap. And where are we at on our bus here? We're at like minus nine ish. So I'm gonna bring this up a little louder so you can kind of hear how it's gonna sound. I fight the fight to take revenge. Although we die, we die again. To win the room. Which is pretty cool, and now we have our delay that's getting a little bit of reverb on it that kind of makes it even more just spacey, but it's not taking away from anything. We're not adding another reverb on top of everything. It's, it's just blending in really well with the lead vocal. So one advanced thing that some people do is they only send this delay to the reverb and not straight out of this track. So we're gonna turn our vocal delay all the way down. This is called uh, ghost delays. And we're gonna we're gonna click this little guy right on our bus and go to pre fader. All right, kind of swapped positions here. You can see, and now it's kind of cool because now only the sound of these delays to this reverb are gonna actually come out, and it sounds a lot different. I fight the fight to take revenge. Although we die, we die again. To That's pretty sweet. That actually sounds really good. So this last thing I'm gonna quickly do is I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bring this guy back in to get a little bit more of the dry, but keep this position because it sounds so cool going back into that vocal reverb. I fight the fight to take revenge. Although we die, we die again to win the room of Moby Dick. Pretty sweet. Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna just show what we've done during these these vocal effects uh, lessons here, and I'm gonna turn off all of our effects so we can hear a little bit of just how it was in the very beginning, just vocal and music. I fight the fight to take revenge. Although we die, we die again. All right, let's try our effects now on here. I fight the fight to take revenge Although we die, we die again To win the room of Moby Dick Pull down under the Essex Founders That sounds pretty sweet. Uh, I really like this Vox Slap a little bit down once we listen back with this delay, sometimes that happens. Sometimes the the slap and the and the reverb sound great together, but when you add another delay, it kind of sounds like it's too much. So I'm just going to lower this guy a couple dB. And then these effects are in a really good spot. Uh, so just to recap everything that we did, this was kind of a fast one, kind of moving through things really quick. Um, but we added a third effect here on a bus. We named it Vox Del for Vox Delay. We did the stereo delay. We used the app to find the BPM, and then we used this little calculator here. This is tuneform.com slash tools, but I usually just type it into Google and this always pops up. We found about what our quarter note delay is from what we were tapping. I typed it in, had to adjust it a little bit, and then we did plus 10 milliseconds and minus 10 milliseconds to, to sort of create a stereo spread that sounded really cool. We brought this EQ in, took off the low end, took off the high end, and then we played around with sending some of this to the reverb 
before this fader even changes it and then add a little bit of this fader and we get um, a really cool sound. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, thank you so much for watching this effects series. Again, if you have not gotten the ultimate vocal preset bundle, I highly suggest that you go get that. Just click the link in the description. It comes with 30 presets for EQ, compression, and saturation. And it works with GarageBand and Logic Pro, which is which is awesome, like both both platforms. So if you really know GarageBand, you can bring over your presets to Logic. And that's at celadorsound.co slash free presets. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week.